What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to turn a simple light like this one into a smart one. Well, kind of smart. You're going to have to automate it. But I'm going to convert this standard bulb into a smart bulb using a Shelly 1PM. So stick around and let's go. Okay, so for our requirements, we're going to need a Shelly device to make this happen. And it doesn't have to be the 1PM like I'm going to be using. This one here. And I'm just using it because I have it. You can use any of them, but I have provided a link in the description for the 1PM. Additionally, I only use Shelly devices that have the Canadian certifications. If you're interested in learning more about that, I'll include a link to a video in which I discuss my reasoning for this and the electrical code behind that reasoning. The next thing you're going to need, obviously, is a running instance of Home Assistant. And that's all you're going to need to get your Shelly up and running. And while we are here on my Home Assistant instance, let's just have a look at what version I'm running. So we just go to Settings and about and here we can see the versions of home assistant supervisor and the operating system that i'm using as well as the front end version numbers okay so i'll use this google presentation to explain a typical three-way circuit and hopefully after this you'll understand what's going on if you already know about three-way circuits and you're just here to see how to set up the shelly device in home assistant just skip to the next chapter configuring your shelly so typically a three-way switch, you have your power coming into your light switch, your first light switch, and from there the line power gets put onto this common terminal, and it's common between these two, what they're called travelers, and that passes power to the next switch depending on the configuration of the switches in the up and down position, and finally it comes out of the common terminal on the other three-way out to your lamp. And if you were to change one of the light switches, power would then turn on your lamp. So schematically, what does this look like? So here you can see that common terminal, and it's common between these two terminals, which we call the travelers. And depending on the configuration of the light switches, you can see that power is coming to here and stopping here. But if we flick the switch, now our power is traveling down this one, and it's connected to the light through the configuration of this switch. And typically, this is the configuration in which you will find your three-way circuits. It's rare that you will find power coming into the actual lamp. It will be power coming into one of the light switches, going to the next light switch, and finally onto the lamp. For reusing the three-way switches in the Shelly, which I'm about to demonstrate, I've actually have it wired where power is coming into the lamp and then through the connections I have it going through the switches back. So when I wired up my Shelly, this is the wiring that I followed. My neutral goes into my Shelly and also to my lamp and the line power is coming in and it is coming out of the Shelly going to the switches and depending on the configuration of the light switches it then triggers the relay which turns the light on and as I mentioned this is the ideal situation in which you can reuse your three-way switches and one Shelly device to make a light smart or a plug smart if it is on a three wire circuit because in the typical configuration what you're going to have to do to replicate a three-way switching as best you can is having a Shelly device at this switch location, a Shelly device at this switch location, and finally your last Shelly device at the light. Otherwise you can see why, because the Shelly requires constant power. So in this situation, the only way to have constant power at the light is to leave your switches in one configuration. Hence, if someone was to change the light to this, now your Shelly would power down and you would not be able to automate it or use it in software anymore. But later on, I will share with you some tips and tricks that you can get a reasonably working one, unless your wiring happens to be where your power is coming into your lamp, then perfect, you're all set. So now that you have your Shelly all wired up, it's time to configure it. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is connect to it. And right now it is broadcasting a Wi-Fi. It's broadcasting a Wi-Fi network. 
and here we can see it here so we're just going to select it to connect to it and once we do connect to it there's a default web address that the Shelley provides which is 192.168.33.1 and we will be able to load that as soon as we connect to that Shelley Okay, so this is the native Shelly portal that it was broadcast and we connected to that Shelly network. So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to connect our Shelly to our existing Wi-Fi. And you just give your Wi-Fi name and password and then hit save and it will connect to it. Now there are a number of things that you can do right from this native portal. And this portal will always exist if when you connect this to your Wi-Fi, it's going to get a new IP address. So this IP address here, the 192.168.33.1, that's no longer going to work. It's going to get a new IP address and Home Assistant will recognize this device because there's two ways of integrating it with Home Assistant. And well, there's more than two. You could always flash different firmware on your Shelly and put Tasmodo or Tasmatize your Shelly device, but the other way is with the native Shelly integration in Home Assistant and also with Hacks. There's an integration there as well. So I'm just going to connect the Shelly to my Wi Fi network and then I'll meet you back in Home Assistant. Okay, welcome back. So it has now connected to my Wi Fi network and we can see that it has picked up that Shelly device and this is the native integration. You can also come into Hacks and if you don't have Hacks installed I do have a video that covers how to install that and that should be popping up right now. But if you do you just click on Hacks and go into Integrations and then Explore and Download New Repositories and then you would just type in Shelly and this is the one here Shelly for Hass and you can install that integration for the Shelly. Now I should mention if your home assistant isn't discovering the device as you can see here I can visit the device so this is the new IP address and it brings us back to that same portal that we had before except now it's on the new IP address. You can find this IP address with your router or you could use a network scanning app like Fing and that will find your IP address for it. So a couple of things to note while we are here in the portal. You can set up timers, weekly schedules. So even if your network is down, your this local IP address for your Shelly you can use to turn on your light, which you'll see that there now it's picking up, drawing 10 watts. And if I shut it off, it turns off. Additionally, if I use the three-way switches, it will also pick it up and register it as being on. And there slowly updated the 10 watts of power use. So sorry about the wiring that you see in the next little bit here. The wiring that I'm using to connect the Shelly was stranded wire. And so you wouldn't typically see that many morets in the box. So the gauge of wire that I used was a little bit bigger than I wanted. So that's why all the morets and why the light isn't sitting on top of the octagon box. But with the proper gauge wire, which your standard house wire would fit no problem in the Shelly. It's not stranded and everything just tucks right into that octagon box with the light on top and you don't even know it's there. Okay, so let's do a little demonstration. Okay, so let's see a demo. As we can see, the light switches will turn the light on and off, just like a regular three-way. And additionally, in the software, we can turn the light off, turn the light on. Okay, so now let's quickly just go over some of the settings for the Shelly in the native portal here. So under Internet and Security, 
we had entered in our Wi-Fi credentials to connect it up, which is why you see the green that it's connected to Wi-Fi. If you wanted to set a backup, you can enable that and enter in your backup Wi-Fi details. An access point roaming uh, just means that it will jump to a higher strength and you can set what you want it to scan for a better strength and it'll automatically connect to that when it has it available. The access point, which we saw before we entered our Wi-Fi credentials, you can configure the Shelly to create a Wi-Fi access point for you to connect to it. Restrict login. I highly suggest that you do enable this and set a username and password so that not everyone can just come in and start turning your light on and off. Your time server. I'm just leaving mine as Google and the cloud and I'm just leaving it disabled. Then we come into safety. So for our power protection, uh, because this is just a small circuit, I only want to use, well, by code it's that. So we'll protect it. So if it's going to draw more than 1,250 watts, it will shut down and the IO URL actions we'll get into later on in the video. So now let's move on to integrating this with Home Assistant. Now we do have a few options to get Home Assistant to see this device. We kind of already saw that the Home Assistant native integration is already seeing the Shelly device. So that is one way that we can get it in. I have seen and heard of people, as I mentioned, flashing uh, Tasmodo software onto their Shelly devices, but myself, I just prefer to use the native software that comes with the device. And you may have a good reason for doing this, but for me, it's just an extra step that I won't be using or covering in this video. So as I said, and as we see on the screen, our first option is the native Home Assistant integration for Shelly. And depending on whether or not you have a Gen 1 or a Gen 2 Shelly, you might need to use this page to get it working for you, as you may need to configure a few parameters, but it's not actually too difficult. So the device generations here, we can see that it tells us that we have to go into Internet Security Advanced, Developer Settings, and enable this IoT protocol and they also recommend using unicast so that was internet and security advanced developer settings so enable which is mine is but right now i'm just using mcast i'm not actually using the ip address but if i was it's just going to be the ip address of my home assistant server and instead of 8123 for a port we're using 5683 and these will be linked in the description. So our second choice is to utilize Shelly for Hass, which is a hacks integration for Shelly. So if we just come over to the repository, that'll bring us to GitHub where there is an awesome readme, which tells you everything that you need to know about using this integration. And basically the differences are more of the entities for our Shelly device are going to be available to us with this uh, Shelly for Hass, a uh, Hacks integration, as opposed to the native uh, integration with Home Assistant. But for my purposes, the native integration for Home Assistant is fine. But you can play around with it and see which one you like better. So it's as simple as going to our devices, our integrations, seeing what it's discovered, and hitting configure. Yeah, we want to connect this, and you can give it an area. I'm just going to leave it blank, and that's it. It's done. So it sees the one device and 10 entities. So here are the entities. So as you can see that some of these entities are actually disabled by the native integration. So if we go back to our overview, we now see that we can switch our device on. So if we turn it on, we'll see that this updates. And we can shut it off and it turns off. So 
let's backtrack a little bit and talk about what I was saying about the three-way switching. And more than likely, you're not going to have a configuration where your power is coming into the lamp and then going out to the switches. More than likely, you're going to have your power coming into a switch, carrying through to the next switch, and finally to your lamp. So one workaround is by installing a Shelly device in this switch and this switch and then your final Shelly in with the lamp. In that case, you could replace these switches with just single gang switches so it wouldn't have this terminal on it. It would just be the two terminals that you see on regular light switches. So that'll save you a little bit of money as you are going to have to spend a little bit more to install a Shelly device in each of the switches. And in doing those, you can bring it into Home Assistant. You'll see a bunch of Shelly's. And if we just go over here, then you can start adding automation so that when your different light switches are switched, the light will either turn on or off and you would just use those other Shelly's. When the relay turns on and Home Assistant sees that that relay is turned on, it can then, in, through an automation, turn on the Shelly that's controlling the lamp. And another solution uh, is to use HTTP commands. So that was what I was talking about here with these IO URL actions. So depending on which one, so it would be button switched, you enable that and then you enter in this URL command. And what happens is this Shelly will send a command via HTTP to this Shelly in the lamp telling it to turn on. And those HTTP commands, again, I'll link this in the description. You can get from here, but for a turn on, this is what we see, let's just make this bigger. So the command is going to be HTTP, the IP address of the Shelly you want to control. And then just follow this format. And you'd enter that here. And then as I said, that will send that command directly to the Shelly. I know they're not the greatest solutions, but they are a pretty good workaround if you want to automate a three-way circuit in your home. The other way is to start pulling wires so that you can move this power from this switch. You'd have to pull a wire over to the lamp, and then you'd be able to run with one Shelly, but that involves fishing wire, and the cost of these Shelly devices isn't too bad. So, like I said, not a bad solution. Well, friends, this is where I'm going to be leaving you. I hope you've discovered something useful today. And if you've made it this far, you deserve an extra thank you. So thank you. I love to hear from you in the comment section below, and I hope to see you in future videos. Goodbye.